What's up, everybody, and uh, welcome to another exciting episode of Fix My List. Today, we are going to be talking about some chaos. We have some Chaos Space Marines and Death Guard on the menu today. Nick, are you excited for that? I'm so excited, Quinn. I cannot wait. Chaos is my favorite of all the factions, and you know what? That's what we're here to do today. I am but a humble recent convert, convert to the Dark Gods. I have uh, come over from the forces of the Elfkin, but I'm actually really excited for Chaos recently. They've got a lot of really interesting options and a bunch of factions that I'm really excited to put on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Are we, are we actually live? Yeah, we are. Yeah, okay. I trust yeah, okay. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one of those fun facts. So you might be wondering why Jack's not here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jack resnacks himself. He's off to the land of the Europe to go play some more Warhammer, uh, which leaves me and Q money to mm -hmm. us today. I know. That's what right. a fun time. But don't worry, for those of you who love Mr. Jack Snacks, he will be back to deliver you snacks and fix list next week. Next week. Next week. Right. Well, uh, Nick, do you want to go ahead and talk about what we are, if you've ever been here before? Well, of course. So we're Art of War. We're a channel focused on competitive Warhammer, and we're here to help you learn the game and become your best. So if you're interested in that stuff, please do us a favor and subscribe to the channel. We produce daily content on this channel about competitive Warhammer, just the things surrounding that. We try to help the hobby grow. And uh, we also have this really cool subscription platform called The War Room, which you can find the link for down below, thewarroom.bhx.tv, which you can use to access all of our premium content, which is for our subscribers. We have three coaching games per week. We have uh, different faction focuses now. We have strategy sessions. We have all kinds of stuff focused on helping you get better at Warhammer. So do check that out in the link below. And it's available on apps now as well. How exciting. It's very exciting, Quinn. Is that Apple and Android? Apple and Android. You know where your apps are at. Absolutely. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and kick this off with the very first of our lists. We've got some CSM lists. Absolutely. Let's check those CSM right here. So this list is from Maps, uh, and I believe he sent us an email or something. Yeah, we so go ahead and Maps see. is one of our Warm members, and if you want to sub subscribe to the Warm to get your list fixed as well, you totally can because you're a Warm member. Um, so that's one of the perks you get with your three-day free trial. But Maps here has submitted a list, and it is super awesome. It's Slanesh focused, and he says that his thesis is basically to be like Tyranids, where you're going to force a whole bunch of Battleshock tests. So there's a bunch of Battleshock, um, like shenanigans in here. The Raptors make you minus one, they make you take extra tests, and then the Noise Marines, if they shoot you. Um, make you take additional Battleshock tests. And I think it's a really cool approach to CSM right now just because they are a little bit struggling for mm -hmm. a conventional means of playing Warhammer, especially in some factions like Custodies, because you charge into Custodies with your awesome Chaos and then, you die. and then they fight first, and then they minus one damage, and then you can't do anything, and then you get killed. So an interesting way Maps is trying to circumnavigate that is to cause a bunch of battle shocks at various times. The odds of failing any one individual battle shock are not that high, but mm -hmm. the odds of failing one across three or four tests, not so bad. And that's something we see a lot uh, in other archetypes that employ battle shock. Like I mentioned, John's Tyranids list, where each individual battle shock has a fairly low odds of succeeding. But if you take your opponent and you say, "Hey, take four or five, then it can get really gnarly. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a bunch of different tests here uh, coming in. We've got the Noise Marines cause tests when they shoot you. We've got the Chaos Lord with the Intoxicating Lesser causes tests when he shoots you or fights you, so provide he's got a dark pact up. The Raptors and the Possessed are auras of minus one leadership because they are fearsome. And the Raptors cause leadership tests at the start of the fight phase as well, Battleshock tests. So you fail any of those, and guess what? You are not using stratagems. You're not of OC. It's life's good. That's... Failing Battleshock is very annoying, especially when you want to use one of those key strategies. So the thing with Battleshocks, I find, Quentin, is that you just you don't want to over-rely on them because sometimes yeah. your opponent just passes and you're like, what the hell? And they can be hard to apply at the right places while you're also playing the game of Warhammer. So I think one of those, so Battleshock is one of those things that on paper, in theory, it's really awesome because you're like, cool, I'm going to line it up and my opponent is going to take a whole bunch of Battleshock tests and they're going to fail and they're not going to have any OC and it's going to be great. But when it comes to actually playing the game... It's really hard to pull off, um, and that's sort of the building your list around battle shock as a core mechanic. I find is not very reliable because at the end of the day, you're relying on your opponent rolling poorly, and sometimes, as we've all seen it, they just pass two or three battle shocks in a row. Yeah. So I think the reason a lot of factions that do have really good battle shock um, shenanigans work is either because when they fail those battle shock tests, it's so crippling. 
Or there's really no way to get around Bottle Shocks, like what Tyranids do with Shadows in the Warp. Everything will take one. And you're just kind of hoping something's going to fail it. Or they back it up with another really good... Like, all of the units that do Battle Shock work on their own, and the Battle Shock is just like a cute thing. So a thing that comes to mind right off the top of my head is the Mutal of Vortex piece from Thousand Sons does an aura of, like, take a Battle Shock test, which is cute, it's nice, but you take the Mutal of Vortex piece on its own. And there's some units in here that I don't know if we would want to take it without the Battle Shock aura. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's just go to the list top to bottom, and then we can start to dissect what we want to affect and change and, and all that, and how we want to fix it. Yep. So we've got a Chaos Lord with Marcus Lanesh with the Intoxicating Elixir, another Chaos Lord with Marcus Lanesh, two Marcus Lanesh Master of Executions, and then one Mark of Undivided Master of Possessions. Those are our characters. Then we've got a unit of ten Nurgle Cultists for to hold our backfield, three by five Slanesh Legionnaire Squads with heavy melee weapons, two by five Noise Marine Squads, ten Undivided Possessed, Two by five Nurgle Raptors, five Slanesh Warp Talons, an undivided Forge Fiend, two Rhinos, and ten Pink Horrors. Yeah. So overall, it is a very MSU-style multiple small units. we got lots of five-man uh, skirmish squads coming out of Rhinos. Got a five-man jump infantry, which I love. Ten Possessed to act as that hammer unit. A Forge Fiend to keep people honest with those two upstate Terminator-type models. And ten Pink Horrors seem to just be there to help with mission plane scoring and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts right off the bat? Because I have some thoughts, but I want to hear your take, a oh, great Chaos Master. Yes, yes. So, basically, I love the idea of MSU dudes in Rhinos. I think that is one of Chaos's Chaos Base Marine strong suit, especially if you add the Lords and the Master of Executions, they can hit very hard. The thing that I don't love is the 10 Possessed with the Master of Possession. I just think it's very overcosted. Mm -hmm. Strength 5, AP 1, 2 damage, even with Dev Wounds, even with rerolls, is just a very mediocre profile, and they're very vulnerable to just being shot. Yeah. Um, they don't go in transports. Of course, you can use terrain, but once you're exposed, you are done. I have never been more than whelmed by the possessed. I think also it's kind of come down to that unit is here because it does battle shock, not because it really does anything else. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I think having like battle shock on the side is fun. Like I I like the the like raptors because i think raptors are an interesting choice in and of themselves they're right. fast and as a unit they're not that expensive you get like what is it like two melt guns in this squad or two plasma guns yeah you um, get two two special weapons plus your sergeant can get a plasma pistol and power fist yeah it's not a bad skirmish no, unit. no it's not a bad skirmish unit i like them by themselves um but i because they kind of they add to it but they also do something else yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and take out this Master of Possessions Possessed yeah, squad. Let's, I think let's, we can let's cut that. Bit. And if you cut that, you end up with 1,640 points. Yeah, we have so a lot of other 360 points. all of a sudden shows up. That's a really exciting amount of points to have. Yeah. You know what else is exciting? What's exciting? This super chat from Red Rum. This Red Rum! Two dollars super chat. Hype for Q and Nick team up. Good start in the day. Thank you, Red Rum. Thank you. I'm also hyped for this Nick this is, team this up. This is awesome. I appreciate yeah. you. I have something else I want to cut right off the bat. What? It's those pink horrors. Yeah, what are they doing? I, 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 the problem is I think if we want trash, we just take more cultists, but I don't think this is what this list needs. I don't really know what these pink horrors are supposed to be doing. Mm. Are they also an aura of battle shock? They're not. Blue horrors are an aura of minus one leadership and they infiltrate. Pink horrors do not do that. They just like are a unit with good OC and they deep strike and they split. It could be like a rapid ingress deep strike objective glum tool. That I don't hate, but I don't love it either. They're annoying and they're kind of expensive for just being annoying. Yeah, then 140 yeah. is a lot for just some OC battle shock stuff. Go ahead Excuse me, folks. I got some allergies. Okay. So, so how many points does that leave us with if we cut the um, Master of Possessions, the uh, Possessed, and the uh, Pink Horrors? Quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I think that lot. now we're at 1,500 on the nose. we got 500 of our army. A uh, quarter of our, of our total list is available to us. So, so, yeah, go ahead. Can you tell me what Noise Marines do? Noise Marines shoot a bunch of Sonic Blasters, which are three shots each, strain four, AP nothing, damage one. They're just, you know, three shots. Okay. And then the Blast Master is not bad. It's three shots, strength nine, AP two, and flat three damage, or mm -hmm. a medium profile, it's strength six, AP one, and, and one damage. Yeah. Uh, and if they hit they, you, you take a battle shot. If they hit cast? you in the shooting phase, you take a battle shot. Cast. I actually quite like them. They're not bad. They're OC one, which is the part I don't like, but yes. that's okay. But <sighs> what if we build this list... We build this list around um, like a bunch of rhinos 
with noise marines and legionnaires inside. And we go really hard into the MSU, and we just make our opponent take a bunch of battle shock tests, but we have units that like do other things. And then we attach like murder characters into the legionnaires and noise marines that are gonna be popping out of the rhinos. I think you are on it. So yeah. uh, a great ver way we can do that is just by taking more rhinos, taking more dudes, and, and seeing where that gets us, and letting battle shocks and noise marines really just add up on the opponent. Yeah. I, I think I like the Noise Marines because they're a unit that I actually think is probably just worth it for 85 points. Yeah. But also does that battle shock test. And if you take like four of them, mm -hmm. it's a lot of tests, right? So remember they're not battle line. The only way to get more than three is to take Lucius as your warlord. I was actually suggesting what if we just take Lucius anyways. Really? Why do you like Lucius? So I like the fights first and he's pretty hard. I mm -hmm. think he's an interesting choice. Mm -hmm. um, I... Really like the idea of having a bunch of squads that aren't that expensive but all hit pretty hard because they yeah. have a good character inside. Okay, let's do it. Let's do some MSU CSM character spam. So we got Lucius added to the mix. He's going to be 95. I'll add some more Noise Marine units to this one. Uh, we'll make Lucius the Warlord so that way we can, of course, have more than... How do you spell his name? Is it that? Uh, L-U-C-I-U-S. Yeah, look at that. How many points is Mr. Lucius? He is 195. He's 95. He's not that expensive. And he, he's pretty good in combat, right? Yeah, he's pretty good in combat. He gives always strikes first to a squad. Yep. So I like that. And I'm just going to put Warlord just so we all know. I, I, at that point, I would go for a third Rhino, third Noise Marine squad, and probably even a third char uh, another character for close combat. So, so every squad has a character. Joint to it. And your, your choice of Lord or Master of Executions, I'm not really married to either here. So I I think, so they hit, the, the Lord hits harder once, the Master of Executions hits harder a little bit, but I think these squads are all going to be relatively like one-use missiles. I don't envision these squads ever surviving. Yeah, it's not so much that the Lord only hits harder. The Master of Execution also gives reroll hits to their unit, and then this stacks nicely with the, the sustained fives that the that, engineers... That is true. It, are, it is cheaper. So why don't we go ahead and add another Master of Executions, and we'll just... Come. And that, that'll put us uh, to 1835. I went ahead and took the Relic off of the Lord as well. Um, the elixir? Just because he's not really a great carrier for that relic. It's like a fine way to spend your last 15 points. Yeah. So that puts us to 1820, um, which leaves us with a nice amount of points left. We could just go ahead and put in some more Warp Town Raptor type thing. So at this point we have two Lords, three Master Executions, Lucius, ten Cultists, 15 Legionnaires, 15 Rhinos, ten Raptors, five Warp Talons, a Forge Fiends, and three rhinos. Yes. You know what I kind of want to add? What's that? I kind of want to add in this fish is the next theme is the super demon prince with the intoxicating yeah, elixir. I, I was thinking that as well. Yeah. I think that would be a great add. So this is a, a flying demon prince. We can just add him in now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what he does is he's a great vessel for the intoxicating elixir. He's going to be 210 with that relic. And he, uh, of course, will put us over in points, but we'll fix that in yeah. just a second. He moves 14, he can advance and charge, he can fall back and charge all for one CP. Um, he does a number of mortal wounds, roll one dice for every wound he has when he charges in, and then on a four plus you take a mortal. So on average, it's about five mortal wounds. Because of his intoxicating elixir and his gun, he can shoot you, cause a battle shock, charge you, cause a battle shock, uh, fight you, cause a battle shock, rather, with the with elixir, which is really nice and thematic for with how the army is trying to play. And he's really fast and he's hard to kill, so he's good at going into your opponent's backfield and really getting towards something that you're not really otherwise able to get to with these rhinos and noise marines and stuff that walks around on foot. He's a, he's a really excellent choice for a slanish list. And I think he couples super, super, super nicely with Seleski, which of course you're only going to access with demon allies with by taking Seleski and 10 demon nets, which will put us like a fair bit of points over. I don't hate Seleski. And so one thing I think this list actually kind of hurts for right now is being able to kill like something like a land raider. Yeah. Yeah. And demon nets with Seleski are a really interesting choice. So tell me about that combo. Why does that go to killing land raiders? Well, separately they're pretty interesting because Seleski's like a nice backfield attacker, which you all know, and demon nets can still do that OC bomb that the pink horrors were previously doing. Yeah. Just two OC models that move fairly quick, deep strike, etc. But together they combine forces. Demon nets naturally have devlins on their data sheet with three attacks per model, 
Um, but no rerolls or anything is kind of soft. Seleski does make it crit fives, though. So now we're doing dev wounds on crit fives. That's not soft anymore. That's really not. No, we're doing real damage. So I love that little package, and it synergizes really nicely with the overall army. Putting that in is going to put us at 2260. So I think we need to shave a little bit of character out and shave maybe the warp talons out to try to find some points for it. So if we add Seleski and Demonettes, how many points is Seleski? She's 120. Which I think is totally okay. How do you spell her name? I can never do it. Uh, S-Y-L-L-E-S-K-E. I just made that up. But I think that's right. And she's 120? Yes, sir. Her name is not real words. It's so. not real words. Not that real means words. we don't need it. Yeah. Um, is it. There's like an apostrophe in there too, right? Yes. So, Quentin, I think I've got it. And then how many points are Demonettes? Demonettes are uh, 110. 110. Okay. So this is going to put us over, but I think a good solution to fixing that is by cutting the five slanesh warp talents, which I do love, um, but it's just a points thing here. Mm -hmm. And we can actually cut... We, we're not making use of the fact that Lucius makes these noise marines battle in, so I think we go ahead and cut Lucius right on out of here for points. And we're still over, so I think we cut um, one of the Masters of Executions over and turn him into that, chaos, that third Chaos Lord. So he becomes another Chaos Lord? Yeah, so we still have... Uh, let me just make sure I am doing this properly. Oh, sorry. We, so we have four combat characters here. We could we have points right now if we want to turn turn from go from two and two to three and one in either direction. Got it. Okay. Um, but this is basically the gist. We have the Noise Marines, the Legionnaires. They're all joined by these really powerful lords and executions. Two squads won't be joined by anyone. I think that's okay. You could have a noise marine rhino that sits in the back and just shoots two. I think that's fine. Two blast masters out the top and skirmishes a little bit mid to late game. The prince Celeste is your backfield attackers. Your raptors are your early game skirmish. Your forge fiend is your hammer. I, really nice. I like this list actually. I think it's yeah. legitimately pretty good. It, uh, it still has actually more battle shock shenanigans than it did before because the prince is a better vessel for intoxicating wizard because he shoots and fights and he flies and stuff. Yeah. So the, I think that also it all the, works really nice. The nicely. three squads of noise marines just being like bang, 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 battle shock is yeah. really nice. Take a bunch of battle shocks. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, cool. I think that's awesome. Maps, thank you so much for inspiring us with your really cool, exciting list here. Uh, we really enjoyed uh, choosing it. Basically, I saw it because I love the battle shock shenanigans that 40k offers these days. So thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy your list. Let us know what you think in that Discord server. Tag us in the comment section. Leave a comment if you like it. And thank you so much. All right. So up next, we have a Death Guard list um, from Tilted Simeon, um, mm -hmm. who requests that we keep Mortarian, because he just painted up Mortarian all nicely. We will keep Mortarian, then. That seems really easy. That's what we do here. So I think we're going to be building a list around Mortarian, and I actually don't hate that. I think Mortarian is pretty solid. But I think if you're going to be running Mortarian, you kind of have to build a list that, like, is cohesive around Mortarian, right? Yeah. He's a central buff piece, and you want units that really are like responsive to his buffs yeah so he's 325 points you got to build around him if you want to use him so that's okay let's do that what is you're a resident death guard expert what does that look like to you so we we're going to want to take a lot of units that are reliant on um that are like damage too that really like the ignore modifiers um or are like have you know like a hit re hit like a minus to hit built in so like a plague burst crawler are really responsive to mortarian's buffs but really, anything is really good, especially in a Catan-centric meta, um, where things like the Avatars and Catan are floating around. Having that ignore mobs for like your high damage weapons is also pretty good. Mm -hmm. Basically, you just don't want a bunch of like damage one. Mm -hmm. um, so what does this list have off the bat? We have Mortarian. We have an Icon Bear. We have Typhus. We have one Foul Blight Spawn. We have two Putrefires, one of which has Shamble Rot. We have two squads of 10 cultists, we have two squads of 10 noise marines with one plasma gun, two bubotic weapons, one melta gun, two plague spewers, five heavy plague weapons, six death shroud terminators, two rhinos, two predator destructors, two blow drones, and two squads of nerglings. A lot of two ofs mm -hmm. here. A lot of two ofs. And a lot of random characters. What are we doing with these random characters? So I like this, this list a lot. But the random characters are kind of indicative of what I think the problem here is. There's a lot of good units, but it doesn't have like a central goal. Mm -hmm. So the Icon Bear increases the range of your Contagions. Um, the Foul Blight Spawn lets you fight first. Typhus is pretty good by himself. And then the Biologist Future Fires 
um, give their unit critic lifts on fives, and you can throw an extra grenade. And the one with Shamble Rot, uh, his unit is minus two to charge. Yeah. A lot of different things going on here. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of different things going on. But I think if we're going to be running more Tan, we want a list that has a very central cohesive core, because his auras aren't that big. So what is Mortarian doing for this army? His biggest thing is that he ignore modifiers? So he does, he does, he kind of has three goals, right? Okay. Three jobs. So the first thing is that he's an aura of ignore mods. Yep. The second thing is he's an aura of real ones to wound. And the third thing is that he's kind of hard to kill and he hits like, okay. Mm -hmm. Not very hard, but okay. Yeah. So he's really good at moving up the center. So you want things that move up the center with him. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think those Death Shroud Terminators are where we want to be. Um, I think they're pretty good by themselves, but I think if we're running Mortarian, he kind of already fulfills the like bully the center durable unit goal that they want to be. Right. And also, they're not super, they don't get a lot of bonuses out of his thing, out of his abilities, because their flamers already are anti infantry. Do you think they make a good sense as like a rapid ingress tool with Typhus where they show up in an area where your army can't otherwise access? They do. Um, I think they're interesting, but I think especially for playing Mortarian, then we already are committing a lot of points. I think Mortarian's only worth it if he has a lot of things to buff, and I think they dash out are best when they're doing that rapid ingress assault tool. Not near Mortarian. Not near Mortarian, right. So they're kind of off, and then Mortarian's not buffing them. Right. So I think our options are either to make the squad smaller or to remove Mortarian. So what do you what do you want to do with this list? Where would you go? So I really want to add some Plague Risk Crawlers to this. I mm -hmm. think if we're running Mortarian, they're really good with him. Um, and I want to add basically a bunch of shooting threats that are kind of... I want to add a bunch of like shooting units that are receptive to his buffs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so are we thinking triple Plague Risk Crawler as our, as our foundation I think here? we should start there. That's a good... Th it's a good package with Mortarian. I think with... You're I think the type of weapon Mortarian, that really hates we, indirect... Or hates the penalties that come with indirect mm -hmm. fire. So being able to ignore those mods is really strong. They're also low AP and there's a lot of space brains in the meta right now. So being able to ignore armor of contempt is really strong. That's good too. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and add three Plague Risk Crawlers. Okay, what are we going to cut out to add three Plague Risk Crawlers? We're going to have to do some, some surgery here. Yeah. Some Death Guard surgeries. Am I going to see a... Uh, Plague Surgeon make an appearance? Uh, almost certainly not. They're bad. Oh, okay. Well, I just got excited because you said surgery. But Plague Burst Crawler, triple, and they are 180 points, points each. Yep. And we're going to give these guys entropies because they're really good with the reroll ones. You like them instead of the flamers? I, I do. Um, and here's, here's why. So the flamers are really good if you look at the tanks in the vacuum. But the problem is it's hard to look at the tanks in the vacuum because they have the rest of the army behind them. And the fact of the matter is that killing random infantry models is just not what I need Death Guard to do, right? right? Because we're going to also probably keep some Plague Marines and Blow Drones that are going to be our great caddies for Overwatch and stuff, so the Plague Burst Crawlers are never going to be doing that. What I need, honestly, is just a chance to kill a Rhino at range, and mm -hmm. the Entropies offer that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely is something, especially with those Predator Structures, you actually end up with a lot of high-quality firepower um, in the list, you have those auto cannons, and I like the last cannons in Death Guard for the Predator Destructors. And then you have the Entropy Cannons. You are now a long range shooting army, which is not yep. something Death Guard have ever done before. So um, I think we can't really afford Mortarian and the Death Shroud and the Plague Burst Crawler. So I'm yeah. going to go ahead and take them out. Does that mean Typhus is out too? I'm actually going to leave Typhus for right now, and Ooh, we're going to see okay. where the points leave it. I really like solo Typhus, and oh. here's why. So Typhus is. Um, He's like six or seven wounds. He's tough in a six, two up, four up. So he's really, he's not hard to kill, but he is legitimately annoying to kill. It requires real effort to go and kill him. Right. Um, he gets pretty hard in combat. He does some cute random mortals. Um, he's, a, he's an amazing, like, thing to go in your opponent's backfield and then, like, walk at them. He also moves five, which is pretty nice. Yeah. He's a great, like, rapid ingress taken objective by himself because he'll, he'll win fights against, like, five face wounds. You know you're playing Death Guard when move five is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of things that I think are really good that have moved 10, let's go ahead and take these blow drones because I like them. Yeah. But we're going to go ahead and remove the blight launchers because oh, I yeah. think they're not where we want to be. I think drones have two options. You can either take the flesh mower or you can take the flamers. I think the flamers are pretty good. I'm a or, big fan of the flamers. Yeah. yeah. Why do you like the flamers over the flesh mower? Um, because I like having the guns. The problem is the flesh mower requires them to be in melee and they're kind of like anemic when they get there. Yeah. But having the shooting, they're just very good at being like shoot, 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 shoot at like 
nonsense infantry killing two or three space marines a turn. They're also pretty good with Mortarian because every time you're like, ooh, I rolled, you know, eight shots that with my anti-infantry two plus weapons, oh, I rolled four ones. Yep. 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 Okay. So I like that. I like where record, our core is going, but we are at 2295. So what do we do about that fact? I know. So we're here right now. So let's go ahead and take out this Icon Bear. I don't think he is going to be doing what we need him to be doing. He increases Contagion Reigns by a bunch once per game, but it's just not that it's useful. It's just not that useful. Yeah. And we're actually going to do something a little heretical. We're going to cut both these squads of Nurglings. What? I think they're not necessary anymore. At all? I don't think you need them. Why is that? So I think as it currently stands, and Typhus might go, but Typhus is expensive. Um, but he has OC, and he's thinking they can go back there anyways. And the Nurglings can't walk through walls. And I find that um, my Rhinos end up doing things like Homer is the time anyways. And I'd really rather have these bloat drones to be doing this stuff, right? Yeah. If you think of one bloat drone as an upgrade over Nurglings, that is a, a significant upgrade. For you kind of points. fulfill, the, fulfill yeah. the skirmish roll. You get OC3. You get relevant durability. You get relevant offense. You get a, you get a lot. I like Nurglings and Death Guard specifically for holding and screening areas of the table in the back where you don't want to necessarily have a bloat drone. Do you think a squad could be useful for that? It could be, but we do have to make real costs. Mm, yeah. I find Nurglings are one of those things that I kind of think of them like a premium enhancement. Okay. Where I have to pay 40 points, but they're just kind of like if I have, if I write a list and it's 1960, I'm going to take Nurglings. But I really don't ever want to go out of my way to take Nurglings because I've played too many games where they just don't do anything. Yeah, okay. They're never outstanding. They never like do what I need them to do. Really savvy players will often screen them out, and they just kind of die. So we're at 2170 after cutting the nerdlings, after adding the Plague Crawlers, and cutting the Icon Bear. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and cut one squad of cultists for now, see yeah. where we're at. And I think one is One, one is, is totally sufficient. Mm -hmm. Then let's go ahead and cut Shamble Rot. Don't think that's necessary. Shamble Rot. Okay. We're getting pretty close. Uh, with that in mind, we're at 2095. 2095. That is an awkward number. His typist alone is just 80, and then you, you don't you can't cut it much more. From yeah, that. I was going to say, if it was 80, I could do it. So uh, where do we want to cut points? This is the question. Have we? Can, what about two Plague Burst Crawlers? Oh, we could do that. I think the problem is that we're taking Mortarian, so we want to get a lot of value yeah, out of his value. auras, right? Because uh, um, right now we have a lot of units that work really well. We have the Predators who really like him. We have the Plague Burst Crawlers who really like him. And then we ought to have the Plague Marines to screen out. Okay. Okay. So I, I really like 2 by 10 Plague Marines and Rhinos. I really like the Vehicle Core. I like mm -hmm. Mortarian. I don't want to cut anything, but obviously we have to. Point, so. We have to. Okay. So what do you think is the most cuttable? So I think Typhus is the most cuttable. Uh -huh. We cut him. Okay. Now we're 15 over. Yeah. And it's a very painful offer. It's a very painful oh. If it was 10 over, I would say cut Cultist and add Nerglings. Right. You can't do that. No. Um, so basically our points have to come. So, ugh, 15 points is the worst possible number. We could cut a Predator Destructor into a Blow Drone. We could do that. So if we cut the Destructor... Just have one Destructor, three drones. Yeah, I don't hate that. I don't hate it. I don't love it because it's a little just like, yeah, there's one Destructor, what are you doing? But I do kind of... They're not points. bad. They're not bad. They're not bad. It's like the fourth Plague Crawl. So now we have 75 points. Um, we do. We do have... Seven, we have 25 points, actually. Um, 25 points. We could... I still like the idea of cutting one Plaber's Crawler into that Predator, and then we have uh, 25, 50, we have 75 points again, like you said, yeah. which we could use to get some more Nurgling or something, but we're kind of at that point where we just have 25 points left, right? We could just add an Enhancement at that we, point. We could just add Shamble Rot back. We could just add Shamble Rot back. Make it easy, make it simple? Yeah. I like that. So basically, we've replaced Nerglings with Blow Drones. We replace characters that give up assassinates and don't contribute much with um, also Blow Drones. And Plague Bruce Crawlers, which will add quite a lot of firepower, synergize with Mortarian nicely. And we've replaced the Death Shroud package entirely with Blow Drones. Do you think that's something that we are okay with missing that Death Shroud package? I think so. Um, so here has been my experience with Death Shroud is that on paper, they're great. But at the end of the day, they just move four inches. Right. Which means even if you're up at ingress, you're never getting anything more than your first layers of screens. Yep. And you could very well just fail the five-inch charge. And yep. that's really sad. Yeah. Um, they hit kind of hard in combat. They're cute in shooting, but they don't, like, end worlds. Right. They're, like, four attacks at, like, eight, three, two. 
after contagions. It's pretty good shitting. It's pretty. Yeah. Well, that's the it's comment. A, it's yeah. a little more uh, vulnerable to minus one damage than I'd like, and that yes. is a thing. Yeah, I'm, I, they're, they're definitely a solid melee package. I'm just saying they don't. They won't like obliterate your opponent single-handedly, yeah. right? Like you can't charge in and split four ways and kill three units. No, that's not happening. Yeah. Um, Overall, I think this is a solid Death Guard list. Like, if you look at what the competitive Death Guard lists are running, it's Plague Marines and Rhinos backing tanks. Yeah. Tanks backing this Plague Marines This is really and similar to what I ran on stream. I yesterday. think the, the only way I would really want to change this is by cutting Mortarian yeah. for more stuff, but that's like the principle here. We have a yeah. beautifully painted Mortarian. Let's use them. Mm -hmm. I need to do that. My Mortarian is really pretty. I know. Okay. Tilted Simeon, I hope I did not butcher that. Thank you so much for submitting your list. Listeners, if you want to submit your list, go ahead, become a war member. There's a link below for your three-day free trial, the worm.vhx.tv. With that, you'll get access to our amazing Discord server and the Fix My List channel. In that Discord server, you just submit your list, and we will fix them. Yep. For those of you wondering about a Facebook list, it'll probably be whenever we do Space Marines next, um, which I think is somewhere in the rotation. We kind of rotate between, like, Chaos, then Xenos, then Imperials, and stuff like yeah. that. So you can join whenever. Um, just go ahead and post it whenever whatever we do a, a Fix My List. We'll add that channel, and we'll say post lists for whatever faction we need. And um, Super Memes, thank you so much for joining the Worm as a Bronze member. That is awesome. All right. You want to talk about our last list for the day? We sure do. Okay, we have Moonlight Inari's Chaos Space Marines. Very different than the one we had before. Yes. So what do we have here? We have Abaddon the Despoiler. We have two squads of sorcerers who are Slanesh, two sorcerers that are both Slanesh, one Ted Man Terminator squad, five squads of Zinch Raptors. Three squads. Three squads of Zinch. <laughs> I can't read today. Three squads of Zinch Raptors, two squads of Legionnaires, three Predator Destructors, one Vindicator, and two Chaos Rhinos. So it's a really interesting CSM list, different to the other one in that the sense that it's got Abaddon 10 Terminators as a real hammer package unit, and I want to keep that intact just because it's something we haven't seen in a while, and it's still a very powerful tool, Abaddon plus 10 Terminators. If you're newer to CSM, it's a great place to start your CSM adventures. The things I'm looking at that we could potentially manipulate are the two Slanesh Sorcerers. That is just like an ineffective 60 points I found. I tried it out. Minus one hit's just not that great. Their shooting is pretty mediocre. Um, they also don't synergize with the Marker Slanesh that the Legionnaires want to be because they just don't benefit having being a shooting unit themselves. Um, so I think getting points back there, if we're going to pay for two Rhinos, if we're going to pay for two Legionnaire squads to go into two Rhinos, I really want to get more value of that and just go four squads of Legionnaires into Rhinos. Now we have a lot of cheap MSU mission play to supplement the, the brick that is 10 Terminators yeah. in Abaddon. So I'm going to go ahead and see what it looks like if we cut the two Sorcerers and add... Two more Legionnaire squads. I think that's going to leave us a little bit over. While you're doing that, um, Trent Raber, who I believe was our Death Guard player, Ooh. with a $10 super chat. Um, so thanks for doing my list. I do have a question, though. Should I be taking fixed with this, and what would those be? So I am of the opinion, with Death Guard, you take whatever kill secondary your opponent gives up most, plus teleport homers every game. No tactical there? No tactical. Why? And here's why. is because Death Guard is very slow, and that means a lot of times the deck is just not available to you. Right. Like, if you draw, like, half of the cards require you to go and be somewhere else that's, like, six inches away from where your models are, and that's not feasible for you. Uh-huh. Now, you do have Blow Drones, you do have Rhinos, you do have things that are a little faster, so you can play the deck better than normal, but I have found whenever I take Homer's... Plus a kill secondary, I do pretty well. Whenever I take something else, I do pretty poorly. The exceptions to this are if my opponent literally gives up nothing on a kill secondary. Like if they have a character and no vehicles, then I might not take that. Right. Um, I really don't like taking tactical, but if I don't give up anything, I might do that. Or if the mission is really rewarding of taking cleanse, for example, if it's something like um, the ritual where you're spawning a bunch of objectives or hidden supplies where there's four objectives in no man's land and cleanse is really available to you and you think that the game is not going to be fairly brawly it's going to be very um like uh standoffish yep. then you might do cleanse homers but if you think that there's any chance your opponent is going to be like punching you in the face dedicating three units a turn to action can be really rough sometimes definitely mm -hmm. So back to this list right here. Thank you so much for your super chat, Hunt. I want to delete these two sorcerers, Quentin, and then I want to put in two more squads of Legionnaires for 90 each, and I think that'll be nice to fill out our Rhinos and give us some more MSU. The real thing is if you're going to put 700 points of your army into one hammer unit, you need the rest of your army to play the rest of the game. Yep. I think having 
Abaddon and 10 Terminators and 3 Predators is like cute and it all is great mathematically, but it's so many points in one ball. If your opponent just peels all of the Raptors and Legionnaires, you literally can't do anything mission-wise. And keeping Abaddon near the Predators, near the Terminators, is like a, a over a thousand points of your army in one spot, which means you're very vulnerable to just being limited on line of sight angles yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I actually have been massaging points here, and I think um, one of the things I want to do is get a second Nurgle Vindicator in as well, because that is like a great damage dealing piece, both to tanks and heavy infantry. And if someone threatens your Terminators with some real credible, strong firepower at close range, because you're a mark of Nurgle on those Terminators, you have all four marks, so you can use the Nurgle strat to keep them unshootable, um, unless you're within 18. If you're within 18, then the Vindicators get to work. And I think that's really strong. The long range of the Predator Destructors have honestly don't synergize that much because this wants to be a medium range style army, a mm -hmm. short range style army. So I think what we can actually do is drop the Predators, drop all three of the Predators because we are a little bit over now. And by cutting those Predators, we get a bunch of points back. And I want to put those points into Warp Talons, actually. So if we take two squads of Warp Talons, we're just a little bit over. And I like two squads of Warp Talons because one just isn't the Enough. right number. Yeah. Um, and to fix that little bit over, I think we cut a squad of raptors. And then we're going to put two raptors, two warp talons. And I like that mix a little bit better because the raptors are a shooting unit where the warp talons are a close combat unit. And the, the raptors want to be zinch. How many zinch. points of warp talons? Uh, one the raptors want to be zinch so that they can make use of those lethal five melted guns. I love that. But the slanash warp talons give you some boosting speed with that advance and charge. And uh, they do it a little bit differently in close combat. So this, my friend, puts us at 1990. Ooh, is there a... Oh, we can't take an enhancement. There's no enhancement. There's no That's enhancement. okay. We're at 1990, and honestly, I am just okay with that. I yeah. think this is an awesome army for a Terminator build. You have eight units, four of which jump, four of which are in rhinos. rhinos, all of which are five-man MSU stuff. That is not an inconsequential amount of unit. Compared to before, where we only had five, the triple raptors, the two legionnaires, and two rhinos. We did have more vehicles, and I like that, but it just you, there's going to be a diminishing returns, and I've shot with Predators. It can be underwhelming. I want the limited guns that we're, limited points we're going to put into guns, I want them to hit, and having Nurgle Vindicators, sustained fives, reroll hits from Abaddon, that's how you get that. Yeah, I really like the Death Guard Predators because they synergize so well with the extra AP, where your auto cannon goes to AP3, you don't get that in CSM. Yeah, the Nurgle Vindicator is something I have not actually put on the table yet, but I've really wanted to, and I think it synergizes super nicely with the Abaddon on Terminator brick package, specifically because it's like super hard to do anything about these Terminators unless you get really close, and getting really close means the Nurgle Vindicators get to slam you back very hard. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime, we're not we're not wanting for mission play. We got quite no. a bit of stuff. How, this was this was a lot of units. Moonlight Inari did not want to include demons because this is a specifically Night Lords list, and that's also why I wanted to include the Raptors and the Warp Towns. Warp Towns are very Night Lords. -y. They really are. Yeah. I love the Night Lords game with the like, lightning and I moon. know. So cool. uh, Night Lords are one of my favorites because CS on chapters are so cool. Yes. All right. Uh, what do you think of this list, Quinn? I really like it. I love the double Vindicator. One thing I love about the Vindicators is they can shoot into combat, right? That's their Oh, role. they sure can. Mm -hmm. So they two of saves. Yeah, they're super independent, uh -huh. right? Like, they're, they're, the Predators all have to be together in a ball. Which means for like line of sight angles, you know very easily where they are. Uh huh. Whereas exactly. you can put like one vindicator on a flank, one vindicator on a flank, and send them up alone. Now you could put predators on flanks and spread them out, but their firepower is not punishing like a vindicator's is. Yeah. If I can just one v one most predators if it's the it's only like, thing on a tank. On predators a tank. are the kind of tank that like if I have a rhino and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna sit on this objective, and you're not gonna kill me, right. and it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, Moonlight and Ari, I hope you really enjoy your CSM list. I hope you, you found some improvements here. I think the 10-man Terminator unit with Abaddon is a great starting point for CSM players, and this is a great way to build around it, because that's what you're doing, much like Mortarian, when you take 300-plus point models, it's not about just sho shoving them in because they're cool, it's about how do you build, make them the best 300-point-plus model they can be Yeah, by mm -hmm. building your list around them. So cultists? So cultists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, well, let's, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this version of Fix My List. If you missed Jack, don't you worry. He will be back with more snacks next week for another Fix My List episode. I believe that's Fix My List Xenos. I believe so, yes. It's him and Richard. Very exciting time. So if you're also interested in getting your list fixed, whether there's Chaos Marines, Xenos Armies, Imperial Space Marines, whatever, we rotate through them all. And every single week we pick three and we go through them. So if you want your list picked, please subscribe to this channel. Become a war member with the link below, theworm.vhx.tv. 
submit your list to the Fix My List Discord, and may the Jack Gods be in your favor because he is the one who does the selections. All right, see y'all later. Bye, everybody. Thank you.